So hi, here with, uh, with, with Colin Percival, my, uh, my friend, and uh, today we're going to have a look at uh, an article that caught our eye, and it was to do with uh, some of the uh, floating wind turbines. Now, this was um, Equinor's uh, High Wind Scotland. So there's five floating wind turbines, and actually, you go down to the beach here at uh, Aberdeen, you can actually see, see this. Them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, um, but... Even though they're so close to the shore here, when they needed maintenance and repair, guess what happened? They took one by one, they took them by tug all the way across the North Sea to Norway, where they maintained, repaired, whatever they had to do. They took them all the way back, 51 days round trip, five of them, so it's taken quite a long time. Uh, why was that? It's mind-boggling, isn't it, Mike? Particularly as we've just built a second new harbour in Aberdeen, uh, which is very close to those turbines, that it isn't capable of dealing with them. And therefore, you needed a, a, a harbour that was had deep enough water to deal with the, the size of these facilities. So, kind of a lack of thought and planning kind of gone into it all, I guess. Just a bit, just a bit. Yeah. So the other thing about this is, of course, you know, um, offshore wind is herald heralded as zero emissions. Um, how, how does that work then with these tugs going backwards and forwards across the North Sea? Well, it doesn't, does it? And they're not zero emissions. Um, you know, they have concrete, steel and uh, blades that are made from petroleum. And I think, you know, what, what you've really got to look at and is, is often overlooked is not while they're actually out there and operational performing. And yes, they they do um, generate energy or they the energy is transferred from, from wind power uh, in, into um, electrical power. But, you know, it's like you say, it's the construction, it's the uh, abandonment of these things. There's a huge amount of uh, carbon released from all the various ships and uh, installation vessels that are used at various uh, stages in the process, including laying cables, um, surveying cables back to the shore. I mean, there's there's all sorts so of the transmissions. The transmission system has to be huge. And rather than having a power station, which kind of has, you know, one one cable going in and out, you have, it's very concentrated. You have a dispersed series of smaller power stations that you need to connect up. So the amount of connections is, is that much larger. Crazy.